Look at you. You made it to another episode of We Did That Shit Podcast, where we talk about who did some shit, what we learned from shit, and how we got through some shit. I'm Maya. And I'm Babi. Podcast family, we appreciate you, and we hope your week was the shit. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome. If you enjoy our company, Please subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast platform. We're on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, and Anchor. You can also follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at We Did That Shit. Hey, I'm sorry. I was looking at, I'm overly stressed about uh, losing weight, I guess. (laughs) I'm like looking at pictures in my phone. Like, do I look the same amount of weight that the scale is telling me that I am? <laughs> but on the pictures, you got angles, so I oh don't. Oh my gosh! I told you not to do it. You obsess. No, I'm definitely upset. If I don't get on this Beyonce diet like soon, I'm getting plastic surgery. It's like, it's what, like what? What you just gonna cut it off? Yes, suck, suck it, it out. out. Suck it out? Okay. I'm going to be like one of them Instagram girls who suck out all the weight, and then I'm taking pictures in the gym like, you too can make this body <laughs> if you just work out right. Because that's what they do. Lying. <laughs> that's, that's what they do. They go get surgery. Mm-hmm. They go to Dr. Miami. They go to Dr. Curves or wherever. Mm-hmm. And then they take pictures in cute workout clothes and tell people, that they if you just out. take this and do this, you could look like this. Mm. And they got these young girls out there really believing, like... That can happen. Well, shit, I'm believing it, too, because that's what I'm about to do. Well, you believing it, the right thing, going to the doctor. Like, they yeah. really got people in the gym trying to work out, trying to do that. Yeah, yeah that's and not it's not be realistic, bad. because you know you can buy six-packs now. What? Yes, you can buy six-packs. I need that, because, I, you know, I went to Morocco, and we had to... Get the belly dancing outfit. You know, none of them outfits came with abs. Yeah. I was like, uh, excuse me. Right. <laughs> this outfit doesn't I didn't come with any la- <laughs> Exactly. But you know, now you can get it. Like, it's a thing. Oh. Like a real six pack. Like they sculpt it in? Yes. What? Well, I'm going to tell you something. And I'm dead serious. I might be old, but I'm doing it the old fashioned way. Watch. Well, I watch while I'm in that damn watch. doctor. While I'm in that doctor's chair. I'm not chair. spending any more money on weight loss. I have done everything except surgery. And I'm not spending any more money. I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way. Because I feel better. Well, that's good. new me. Well, that's good. Well, when I take my pictures in my cute outfits after <laughs> I go to Dr. Kerr's, I don't want to hear no shit. I want to hear, like, look at you. Mm, you look good, girl. Thanks. Right. Give me six months. We don't have six months. To what? Essence. No. Oh, shit. It ain't going to happen by Essence. Mm. But by my next birthday. Okay. It's cute gym clothes from here on out. Okay. Now I just wear a t-shirt and sweats. Okay. I don't wear cute gym clothes either. Mostly because I don't go to the gym. (laughs) But (laughs) when I I do go to the gym. (laughs) But But when when I I do go go to the gym. I, I, everything I wear is just like black and any kind of t-shirt. Like yeah. I wear, but only black. Cause I, I tried to cute stuff, but I sweat so bad. And one time I was in the gym and I was really doing it up. And you know, once I get conditioned, I can be on the treadmill running, right? you know, for a while, but I sweat so bad. It looked like I peed myself like yeah, eight yeah, times. Keep, keep the black on. Yeah. So I got to just wear keep the, black. the black on. So. Well, other than my weight loss journey, how was your week? Um, same shit, different me. Okay. Yeah, progressive though. And um, I'm just, I'm really trying to focus. You know, it is important to focus. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, you know, people living your best life and you only live once and all this other kind of stuff, that stuff can really overwhelm you. Mm-hmm. Like, so I'm really starting to focus on me. Mm-hmm. You know, my daughter, she's fine. My son, he's fine. Everybody else, I don't care. 
Like, you know what I mean? I'm fighting for my own life here. Right. You know what I mean? Trying to stay out of prison. Because I'm not suicidal, but I'm damn sure homicidal. Yeah. I, I mean, not to say, like, I'll just... I probably would, but I would say, <laughs> like, I don't want to go to prison. No, you don't want the loaf. I can't, I can't do We the have loaf. talked about the loaf on the show before. I can't do the loaf. Right. But, you know, people will... Like, Fishing. I'm not going to hurt myself. Right. Ever. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to hurt myself. But I really do be feeling like, you know what? If I can just take this one out. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> Everything all right. would be all right. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and guess what else I did this week? You'll never guess. I'm going to help you out. I watched the first eight minutes of season one, episode one of Game of Thrones. Oh, you did? How was it? Well, I watched the first eight minutes and I was like, yeah, this ain't for me. But you know, like if you want to get into the Game of Thrones, they have, um, like you can YouTube it where they have, it's kind of like cliff notes for the Game of Thrones. So they give you the most important things that you need to see in each episode or each season so that you can catch up to the last season. No, I, my, my thing is, if you're going to watch a show, the first episode it should get to, you. It has right. to lure you in. So in the first eight minutes, they were seeing dead people all over and somebody got their head cut off and it was dripping blood and he threw it over to the guy. And I was like, yeah, no, this is not. Oh, me. well, that's what the show is like the yeah. whole time. Right, 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 right. It's, it's a lot of me. incest. It's a lot of killing. It's a lot of heads cutting off. It's a lot of blood. It's gory. Like, that's I what thought they it was, was doing. like Gladiator. No. I Clearly, because think... it's not for me. I'm just saying. I, but I in, tried. Even in Gladiator, they was cutting people's heads off and well, stuff they, like but that. But it was in the fight. It was the match. Well, this was you, like regular life. Yeah, but it's the... You didn't get to the fight yet. You have to... It's just like any other thing. You watch Game of Thrones? I don't watch Game of Thrones, but... But I'm saying, but that's just because, but I sound like I do, don't I? I sound like I'm a throny, like I'm in it. No, it's not that. I was like, it, wait a minute. No, no, no. But what it is is that, well, I knew I wasn't never going to watch Game of Thrones because even though people say that it's like the best show written on TV, it's like so mm-hmm. good, that kind of stuff doesn't interest me. So like right. Gladiator, um, that time period piece that doesn't interest me so because of that i knew i was gonna watch it because it's like nothing about that would get me but my point is to get to the fight you have to know the story well i was learning the story season one episode one you have to start at the beginning i don't want cliff notes for somebody to tell me episode one season one no it wasn't for me well that's true but what i'm saying is you was like gladiator they start fighting and i'm like they're gonna start fighting too but you gotta lead up to the fight right well you should have had me doing something to lead up to the fight i had to turn it off uh well it ain't for you that's it's not for me but i did something new well what made you even watch it i don't know tripping yeah I was like, mm, let me turn on cheaters. I can't watch this. Yeah, because <laughs> I know if it's nothing like about being locked up or selling drugs <laughs> or <laughs> murdering somebody, it ain't, I, you know, I'm just you like. watch documentaries. No, I watch a lot of documentaries, right. but documentaries are different than shows. Right. Documentaries are about something specific. Right. It's, you know, it's telling you the story or the information about something specific. A show, like a series, I only like certain kind of series. Because even like if you take like Nurse Jackie, I love yeah. Nurse Jackie. She was a crackhead. Right. So that's what I'm saying. It had Uh-oh. drugs <laughs> in it. You know what I'm saying? It was like, oh, I could get with I this. I could get with Jackie. I could get with this. <laughs> Like, like I'm a drug dealer. I'm not. Like, I do drugs. I don't. You know, I don't know. It's, but, that, but that kind of shit Go interests ahead, me. Nurse Jackie. Right. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, every day is a, a day and I'm going to be slim by the time we go to Essence. I believe it. I am. Now, I just want to say for the record. Okay. I have been preparing myself mentally. Mm-hmm. And I was ready. You know what I mean? Two Sundays in a row. Big letdown. It rained. And you know what? It's supposed to rain all day tomorrow. And all day. The mm, devil don't want me to be slim. Was that because you couldn't go outside? I can't. Right. Because that first initial thing, when I walk the bridge or the waterfront, it does something to me. It gets my momentum going and everything. Make me feel slim. Even though I know nothing has changed. But it gives me that momentum that I need. 
And I was like, you gonna get up. I put my clothes out on the edge of the bed. You know what I mean? Black pants, Mm -hmm. you know. Brain. Damn. It's three weeks in a row. Well, put the black pants on. Do something in the house that makes you feel like that's you, what I'm gonna do. You know, if you go or go on, to the gym, but I listen, can't go to the gym. I just don't. But even outside of the gym, if you have Comcast or Verizon or whatever, but specifically Comcast, if you go on your remote or on demand, they have exercise um, videos and stuff mm. like that, and they have a section called walking, and you can do. It's just like walking style aerobics that you can do in your house. I used to do it all the time. And it really does. It's like the eight minute video. So it builds up a sweat. And but you know what? Speaking of the eight minute video, I should do that shit now because I really do work out now. And I do cross it. it. So I'll be able to get through that eight minutes now. Yeah. I know I will. I, I couldn't get through the eight minute video unless I was in front of people and like felt like I had something to prove. Right. I, I I wouldn't finish the eight minute video by myself. I'm like, Shh, forget it. That's how I am too. I'm very competitive when it right. comes. Right, I'm down competitive. To so that, and that's what I'm saying about being outside. It does something to me because I feel like people watching me. You know, right. oh, she gonna make it the whole way. <laughs> right. You know, what I mean, she gonna turn around in the middle of the bridge. You yeah. know, stuff like that. So I feel like you know, it, when I go outside, I feel like I have to go ahead and do this whole trek and finish. Mm. But when I'm like at the gym, the only thing I ever do at the gym is get on a treadmill. Mm. The only thing well, I do. You'll build yourself up to other things. Yeah, but I like, you know. You like what you like. Right. Like walking. I, and... I said I was going to join Black Girls Run. That oh. Was, that was like four or five years ago. I still haven't gotten there yet. Well, it's always tomorrow. Oh, yeah. It's a new day. First of all, these you. thighs got to weigh a, a little less before I start running, running. Because these thighs, you know, about a mile and a half in, these thighs be like, Mm. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just lugging them along. I'm telling you. Well, how was your week? My week was pretty good. I, I, um, you know what? Something's wrong with me because you can't remember. What I you can't did. remember what the hell I did. No, I didn't do anything. I, um, went to work. I worked out, entertained a little bit, hung out with the girls, happy hours and such. And that was pretty much it. I'm finally getting my car back. They called and said that my car was ready. Oh, okay. And so I'm like, all right, that's cool. So I'm going to get my car back. And I'm excited about that because this rental car that I have, it drives nice. But I, I don't like the car. I don't like the mirror in the car. Like. It's crazy sounding, but the, what's it called? The rear view mirror. Mm-hmm. It's like, I can't see anything. And it's probably just because I'm used to driving my car. I keep trying to put the seat up, put the seat down, put the seat to the side, move it. Back. It's just too much. I can't get a good handle on. Your seat goes to the side? No, in my uh, mind, I'm, <laughs> that's what I'm just saying. No, it don't. It ain't doing that much damn uh, high tech shit. I mean, it is a 2019, but that would be excessive. Like, <laughs> you know, my seat moves to the side. It doesn't. But. I'm saying, I'm trying to move my body to the side, move my head around, swivel the mirror. I don't like the car, but it drives smooth. So I'm happy to get my- new. Right. So I'm happy to get my car back. And um, one thing about rental cars is it always shows you what kind of car you don't want. Right. You know, it's like- I had a Nissan Sentra. I was like, uh, uh-uh, I, I, this is beneath me. I can't drive this. <laughs> I, I took that car back the next day. I said, uh, 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 uh honey, uh, give me something else. I can't drive this. And no shade to anyone who drives a Nissan. Sentra. No, not at all. It's just not for me. Well, not even exactly. at all. But you know, it just. I told them, oh, just give me a small car. I don't need nothing real big. Right. Just give me a small car. They I got sure that car. <laughs> that damn sound system wasn't good. Mm. They had no Bluetooth. I was like, I'm used to something else than yeah. this. Give me something else. So then they gave me the um, Altima. So I got 2019 Altima. It shows me that I won't be buying an Altima, but it's cool for what it, it is. It sucks up gas, doesn't it? No, actually that car feels like uh, it's better on gas than my car. Really? But I've realized also this. I've read an article once before that said, like, the more you have in your trunk Mm -hmm. or the heavier your car is, you know, like how you you keep water, right, in your car. And you'd be Mm -hmm. like, I'll take it out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It burns more gas, right? I always, when I read that article, I was like, this is some bullshit. But it's true because that car has nothing in it. You know, I keep, like, my whole life in my trunk. Exactly. 
That car has nothing in it. And that thing, I feel like I'm, I'm just my driving around. <laughs> you didn't share that information. I'm cleaning <laughs> my trunk tomorrow. <laughs> Seriously. It's a thing. So, yeah, but that's all I really mu- pretty much did for the week. Other than that, I mean, you know, happy Mother's Day. Thank Even you. though Mother's Day um, will have passed by the time we release this show. But happy Mother's Day. Thank happy Mother's you. Day to me, you too. Do. That's right. And my niece going to say, well, you don't have no kids. You ain't even got yes, a dog. I said, look at her like, and then remember that the next time you say, I might, can we go to the mall? Right. I might, can we go to lunch? I might, can we do something? <laughs> yes. You're one of the kids that I feed too. Right. And have watched grow. Right. So that means I do have kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, happy Mother's Day to all everybody out there. Hope you had a, a blessed one. And if you no longer have your mother, you know, honor her still on that day. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah. Not really a big fan of Mother's Day because, well, Deja lives in Taiwan. Mm-hmm. And um, Jiggy is like, happy Mother's Day, mom. Yeah. You know, and, and I don't have a mom. And then, you know, there's people that are close to me that I call, like I call mom and stuff like that, but not on Mother's Day. Right. Like, and I don't know why they don't understand that. I just be looking at them like. They don't understand that. I, I just feel like I don't want to be bothered. Well, like you know, I don't call nobody else I don't call nobody else mom. I call, I call. I know you call people's mom. mother's mom, mom but that's that are it. Close I, that, to you, just but, one. I yeah. call mom, but other ones I'd be like, Oh, that's my spiritual mother. That's my godmother. It's this mm-hmm. one, you know, whatever. And, but not on mother's day. Yeah. Yeah. Not on mother's day. Right. I, I can't, I can't get with that. But anywho, who did some shit? Let's talk about Steve Harvey. <sighs> We have to talk about Steve Harvey. You know, the Steve Harvey show, his talk show was canceled. For a country music star. I'm just saying. Kelly Clarkson is country. Oh, she is country music. I always think about her as American Idol, but so. She sang country at American Idol. Oh, get out. I didn't watch her that season. Me either. I'd have never watched American Idol in my life. Oh, she's a country star. Okay, well, for a country star. So they picked up Kelly Clarkson's show mm-hmm. and they chose not to renew the contract for Steve Harvey's show. Right. Then an article came out today and it said, what about Steve Harvey in regards to his show? Because it all boils down to him and the conversation that he had with Monique when he told Monique that you can't have integrity, that you have to chase money instead. And, and so Steve did. Harvey... Chase money. Chase money. And, and chased it on down to cancel. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he he opted to go with a, what, another company. Another production company. So when his show was based in Chicago, the Steve Harvey show, mm-hmm. the talk show that was based in Chicago... It was it was another production company that had it. So it was NBC Studios and this other production company mm-hmm. that produced the show. And um, Steve was making money. NBC was making money. Everybody was happy. But there's another another production company came in that Steve has some ownership in. Mm-hmm. And they said, "Look, we can get you a better deal. Mm-hmm. Send get your show in Los Angeles." you know, nationwide and you'll be getting more money per episode because he's part of the production Mm -hmm. and he's the show host and NBC didn't like that one because they were getting the least money out of the deal Mm -hmm. and they're saying it's a conflict of interest for your production company or even however you're involved, your production company to be producing your show. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, I may be wrong. I don't know. I don't work in Hollywood, but they could have found any slot for Kelly's show. Right. You know what I mean? But because you want to be greedy mm-hmm. and let your integrity fall by the wayside. And I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. I really do um, some of the things Steve Harvey say, not the super things that he thinks are profound because I had mentors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've heard it all before, but 
I'm just saying some of the things that he say, I really do agree with. Mm -hmm. When he responds to the strawberry letters, I be like, exactly. You know what I mean? A lot of things I agree with. And I also agree with the fact that, you know, people form opinions of him and they don't know him because that's what they do on social media and all that kind of stuff. Either people call me arrogant all the time and you don't know me. I'm not arrogant. And I do understand what he's saying. I do. And I'm not going to call the man names because I don't know him. However, even if you're doing good, mm -hmm. the Bible says, don't let your good be spoken evil of. Mm -hmm. So that means even when you're doing something good, you have to do it in a way that shows integrity. Mm -hmm. So if you always out here fanning the I don't have integrity flag. Mm -hmm. That's what it appears to be. Right. And that's what people are going to judge exactly. you off of. Exactly. Exactly. Saying that is just like how uh, reality quote unquote stars say, oh, they edit me to look like this. No, they edit you they for what you gave edit, them. Right. And so if Steve Harvey is saying, oh, people call me arrogant, you don't know me. If what you give off is arrogance, then that's what people are going to think of you. Mm -hmm. And you don't have a problem giving mm -hmm. off arrogance. And, and that arrogance and the not good stuff outweighs all of the stuff that you do that is good. And so now people can't focus on it anything it, else right. because that's you, all they see. That's all they see. One. And two, you so quick to say, Oh, well you don't know. No, I know what you're giving. Right. I know what you're giving. Right. No, I'm not going to be in your presence to know anything else, but I know what you're giving. Steve Harvey. I mean, like, here's the thing, a black man hosting a show, you know, a, a, a daytime talk show is big, mm -hmm. no matter who the man is. Mm -hmm. And so you hate to see that that's canceled for yet another little, mm -hmm. you know, girl coming on. Cause what the hell is Cully Clarkson going to be talking about? I know, but you know I like, I, I watch, um, just like the first few episodes of the voice every season when they do the blind auditions okay. and she is hilarious. Like, I mean, she could be hilarious, she, but it's I like, like Kelly Clarkson. what is she going well, to you know, listen to country music? And yeah. But, and also like, what is she going to be doing that's so different than every other talk show? Exactly. exactly. Right. So, because <laughs> because to me, Kelly Clarkson's show is going to remind me of like watching Rachel Ray. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's that's how she makes me feel. And the but other one, it, Ricky Lake, or right. you know, stuff like something that. Something like exactly. that. So mm -hmm. it's 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 a shame to see Steve Harvey's show get canceled, being that he is a representation of us on mm -hmm. daytime TV. Mm -hmm. However, this is what happens when you put money in front of anything else no matter right. what that anything else be. I think money Steve, shouldn't be the root of what you're saying you right. know recently and I don't mean to cut you off but so recently it was a video of him you know how he gives advice or he talks in between segments breaks. and mm -hmm. during commercial breaks and he's telling people like don't sleep you know wealthy people don't sleep you sleep at eight hours a day and in those eight hours, somebody else is making money. It's only 24 hours in a day. Yet again, showing that all you are thinking about is chasing money. Mm -hmm. And like, we need money to live and all that good right. stuff. But you also need sleep to live. You can't chase money to the, fe to the point where it affects your health. You know what I'm saying? Because if you don't have wealth, I mean, health, you surely ain't going to have wealth. And so sleep is a major part in being healthy being able to be clear minded, mm -hmm. being able to do the things that you do. You can't do all of that off of being tired. So tell and telling people not to sleep is And using the Bible to support it. Exactly. Like a fool. Well, he does that a lot. You know, he, he Does he? Yeah, he does that a lot. He gives his interpretation of That's the first so the things he said so much your interpretation is fine, whatever, but I've never heard him say something that was so far-fetched as this one. Well, you might not have heard him say something so far-fetched as this one, but he, like many people, and it ain't just Steve Harvey, so I don't want to just blame it on Steve Harvey. A lot of people use the Bible for their interpretation to get their point across, and it's not what the Bible or what it was meant to be, because yeah. what he said in what he told people about being asleep. It's a proverb. Right. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't about being rich. It was about what? People not doing Probably, anything. It was about, um, he's, 
those who sleep and fold their hands, poverty will come upon you. But that's for people who the Bible says, if a man shall not, does not work, he shouldn't eat. Right. And so that's the saying you just sitting around doing absolutely exactly. nothing. Not, not because you're your sleeping. Exactly. Right. Exactly. It was so funny because now on social media, people were like, well, now your show got canceled. You could, sleep. you know, you could sleep. That's what the poor people are saying. And But I think what has more significance to him, and maybe he cares, maybe he doesn't, is that the people with means mm -hmm. are saying, I don't know what you're talking about. I sleep. Yeah, because you know, like, yeah, they like, have a video of Warren Buffett. And right, they have and more, Warren, Warren of, Buffett of Bill, has money. Right, and they have and, and Bill more Gates. than Steve Harvey. Exactly. And, and so... And the the caption was, you know, busy is busy is the new um, stupid or something right, like that. Right. Because Bill Gates was saying in the video, like he asked Warren Buffett at one time because he thought he had to have something in his schedule at all times. And right. he asked Warren Buffett, like, well, why don't you have something on Thursday? And he was like. Mm, I'm, I'm I'm resting. Like that's my day to rest. Right. And we know that they are wealthy. Right. Wealthy. Not rich. Wealthy. Wealthy. Exactly. For generations to exactly. come. And Not for your kids as kids. For generations to come. And I remember, know. I remember my dad telling me, and I was like eighth or ninth grade. He was like, "The key is to work smart." Right. And not hard. Not hard. So it's exactly. again, it's not a new concept. Exactly. Not a new concept. So I mean, you know, best of. Everything Luck. to you, Steve Harvey. Yeah, get you know, yourself some I'm rest. I'm sure you're not going to be bankrupt in no, two days. But, of course not. You know, it was good while it lasted. Now, he did make more money while the show was in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Way more money than he ever would have made if he extended the contract in Chicago. But if he would have extended the contract in Chicago, the show would have had more longevity. Yeah, and it probably, probably would have gave him more leverage. Exactly. exactly. It would give you run. more leverage to make more money. Like, people right. want to make the money right now, but right. you're not thinking about the long run. And for what he told uh, for what he told Monique, he was talking about his kids as kids, kids as kids. Mm -hmm. And that's the stuff that you got to think about. But I mean, like you said, he ain't going to go hungry, so best of luck to him. What else is going on? Let's talk about abortion. Oh, the state of Georgia... Well, it's ruled. many states, but... Well, the state of Georgia okay. ruled, and they talk about death penalty and all kinds of stuff now. If you get an abortion. If you get an abortion. Um, in the state of Georgia, they ruled abortions illegal. Abortion of any kind. Right. So in other states, I think like in Ohio, and I read um, somewhere else out in the Midwest, they have they have since ruled like the first heartbeat. So when you f hear a first heartbeat, you can't get an abortion uh, before well, that. How but do here's you hear the thing. a first heartbeat? Just don't, exactly. go, just don't go to the doctor, get a positive pregnancy test and go ahead and terminate the pregnancy. Because that's what people who are making these bills are putting these bills into place. That's what they think of. I, you know, a man puts his sperm into a woman, fertilizes the egg. As soon as you fertilize the egg, it's a whole grown baby in your belly, you know, and we know that that's not the way that science works. You know, it's not the way that babies are born are, are grown. And so when you go and you have sex or however you do it and you fertilize an egg, it's not like a, a six pound, five ounce baby in your belly. That's not reality, but well, that's what they well, are making it seem great like. Great debate. And the debate continues on you know what is life first of all what is ahead. life is life a heartbeat is life breathing air is like you know where does life begin what is life and so i think that debate that argument will go on for centuries to come long after we're gone i just think that for you can if you can't legislate right what people do, if you can't settle that argument, what is life? How can you legislate terminations of pregnancy? And I don't, go ahead. That I'm just saying, if you can't decide what is life, how can you legislate pregnancy terminations? Now, I know a lot of people say, um, and you were saying this, um, how can a man make a decision about a woman's body? Yeah. And, and I'm just saying beyond the fact of the woman's body, because sometimes terminations are decided amongst the couple, right? 
you know, it's not just like the woman says, I'm just going to make the decision or whatever. Mm -hmm. No, it's decided amongst the couple. And what if the child has, um, you get genetic counseling and the child has special needs right. and you just choose not to carry the pregnancy to, to term, term right? because the care that's needed for the child, you may not be able to have the quality of life for the child may be diminished or whatever. And those things should be, in my opinion, up to the parent. No, in everybody's opinion, it should be up to the not everybody's. Parent. Well, no, not mean, everybody. But what I'm right. saying is, is that you cannot tell someone what to do with their body. You should. I don't be care able to. if it's a man or a woman or whoever. Right. That's one. You can't tell somebody what to do with their own body. Two, you don't know the circumstances of the way in which people become pregnant. People could get raped. You know, it could be incest. It could be all kinds of stuff going on. Molestation, all of those things. And then now you want me to carry a child to full term and parent this child that came out of a situation that was not healthy, meaning that you're not going to have a healthy relationship with your baby. And none of these people who are putting these legislations into work are talking about these kids that have to be cared for. If I don't want this baby exactly. and then I carry this baby to full term, am I dropping this baby off at your house? Right. Are you feeding this baby? Right. Because those same people are people who don't believe in government funding. Right. They don't believe in welfare. Right. They don't believe in WIC. They don't believe in anything right. to take exactly. care of a child, child care or nothing. So you want to tell me what to do with my own damn body and make a decision for me with my own damn body. Because you have an opinion of what you want to do with your body. Well, first of all, if you could carry a baby, then you can make your own decisions. And the women that are making these decisions, it's not another person's fault, whatever it is that your thought process is. Like you might put this into, you know, you might be one of those people that are like pro-life because you can't have kids or, you know, like your child wasn't able to carry a kid, whatever the case is, that's not a, the next person's problem. You, that's right. something that you have to come to grips with with your own self. It's not the next person's problem. If I choose to abort my child, like you said, it's this debate. Because to me, when a when a when a sperm fertilizes an egg, is it a baby? The, there's great debate. Is what is it to you? There's great debate. To me, I feel like I don't care if I feel like it's a baby or not. It's my damn body. Right. It's my vagina. Right. It's my conscience that's going to have to deal right. with it. And I should be able to make the choice on what I'm going to do with my body, not right. somebody else. Right. I will be moving. Right. That's just for me. And I'm not saying, hey, go out there, like have an abortion, but I'm damn sure not going to go nowhere or do nothing where somebody can make a decision for me when it comes down to my body. I'm just not. Well, not just that. I just feel like where was the hoopla when, because that takes a lot for something to pass into law. Mm -hmm. So did anybody know that this was up on deck? Yeah, probably. And they just didn't do anything, didn't show up for anything? No, then? because this is something, like you said, just the debate of what is life. This is something that has been going on for so long. What is it? Roe versus Wade? Right. Roe versus Wade back even when that came into play. So this has been going on for so long. And people who weren't, who were against that were trying to make this, these laws pass even back then. And I don't know right off the top of my head what year Roe versus Wade was, but they've been trying to put these laws into place since then. Well, I just think that this is a cop out law. And if you're going to try to regulate this type thing, just like you said, who is going to take care of these children? Nobody. Because you have, I have a child with special needs. Right. And um, I'm divorced. And uh -uh, I just read that measles outbreak is in Loudoun County, bitch. Uh, uh. Go ahead. Well, you know it is. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I have a child with special need. And, um, you know, I'm divorced. Right. And I always said that, you know, the support... And, and I never... I don't want to say I never needed the money, but the financial child support was a plus. But, you know, my children lived... They mm -hmm. had stuff. Uh, however, I don't think it's fair if 
if I'm the custodial parent and I know my child is going to need support for the rest of his life, mm -hmm. and then the child turns 18 and the non-custodial parent just has like, boop. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if you, or even if your child does not have special needs and the custodial parent takes it's 90% of the burden. You're right. You know, because the fact of the matter is, if you're the custodial parent and say you're broke, you mm -hmm. have nothing. Mm -hmm. And the children be like, mom or dad, whoever the custodial parent is, I'm hungry. Right. Well, you got to make something happen. Right. The non-custodial parent be like, oh, mommy or daddy ain't got no money right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But you ain't even thinking past what you, I ain't got it. Right. That's what me do. But you're looking in my face. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So if you're going to regulate things like pregnancy terminations, then you have to, and we can't prosecute or defend morals, but you have to do something to make people accountable and responsible right. for their children. Exactly. I.e. the people who are putting these laws into place feeding the damn kids. And then when you do have situations like your child has special needs, how hard is it for you to get services for your child? Oh my gosh. You know what I'm saying? It's right. extremely hard for you to even get some kind of services. You don't want to put the services into place for the people who are keeping these children that you don't want them to abort. Right. But then you don't want them to abort the kids that they can't take care of or that they may abuse because they can't take care exactly. of them. Exactly. Or that they may kill because they're not ready to be parents. So, exactly. so, so you want them to kill them at uh, fertilization or do you want them to, or if you feel like that's killing, cause I don't think abortion is killing, but if you, do you want them to kill them at their first, and, and it sounds harsh, but I got to say it like this at the fertilization or you want them to kill them when the ass is a six months old, right? W which exactly. one you want to do? Exactly. Because that's what you got to think about. Exactly. When you're putting these laws into place, that's the shit you got to think about. I'm just tired of these white men telling people what to do because they feel whatever. Right. You know, I, I, it's, it's, it's too much. And I really do hope that something happens that they fight back because, um, yeah, this is pretty bad. 2019. Crazy. I think so. 2019 is one for the record books, ain't it? I'm That's trying far. to tell And you. we only, it's, it's, it's only, only May. May. Exactly. Crazy. Speaking of crazy, <laughs> social media and the internet is all a buzz about Aisha Curry. It's like a thing. People are writing think pieces. I see so many think pieces this, um, last week. I'm like, all the girl said was... She hasn't been getting any attention. Well, she was on Red Table Talk with Jada Pickett-Smith right. and her mother and Willow. Um, and it was actually Steph Curry's mother, right? Aisha Curry, and, and Steph sister. Curry's sister. Right. And they were just sitting around the round table, you know, talking about different issues or what have you. And Aisha Curry said on the interview that it. she doesn't get male attention. I mean, you know, I'm summing it up. So... And she was just questioning, like, well, what am I? I don't have him? it anymore? Yes, you know, just exactly. a question. Which is, A, perfectly normal. Normal. B, how women think all of... I remember when... Um, I first worked at the AIDS Coalition and I had to take my boss's car to Staples. Mm -hmm. And we used to call his car the Gaymobile. Mm. Because he had all kinds of rainbow stickers and, you know, all this. I mean, it was a pride. It was the pride mobile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I had to take his car and run to Staples. And he was like, everything. It was a green neon. I'll never forget it. Mm -hmm. And when I came back from Staples, he was like, everything okay? I was like, hell no, everything is not okay. And he was like, what happened? I said, I'm riding around in the game mobile and not one chick tried to hit on me. Like, what am I? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And right. A, I was serious. Right. <laughs> you know what Hello. I mean? And be, because that's how women are. That's how we think. Right. So I, I seen a lot of different things. One of the things that I seen it was that people were thinking that she was saying like, "Oh, I don't get the attention that my husband gets." But she wasn't saying that. And it all? wasn't about her. It wasn't about her wanting to experience celebrity or anything like that. 
Right. So what I looked it up. This is what she said. Something that really bothers me and honestly has given me a sense of a little bit of insecurity is the fact that, yeah, there are all these women like throwing themselves at him, meaning her husband. Mm -hmm. But me, like the past 10 years, I don't have any of that. I have zero. This sounds weird, but like male attention. And so then I begin to internalize it. And I'm like, is this something wrong with me? People don't realize that Aisha Curry is still young. You know, her mm -hmm. and Steph Curry are young. They got we're married. High school they were right. high school sweethearts. Mm -hmm. They got married very young. They started having children. Mm -hmm. You know, any woman, and this is for any person, but specifically for women, because we're talking about her, it's not about men coming up to you or hitting you and saying, hey, give me your number, this, that, and the third. It's the fact that you want to feel beautiful right, and exactly. wanted right you know and it's not about her wanting to be like oh, i want to step out on my husband or anything At like all. that it's nothing about that it's just about like if nobody ever says to you like yo you pretty right you start to think like but damn bitch am i pretty right. and that's even if another woman don't say to you like you look nice today you know you look girl you're wearing that dress exactly. if a man don't say Damn, sis, I see right. you. Anything. Right. You start to, you do start to internalize that. Like, you do. damn, like, what the hell what is going on? Liver? What's wrong exactly. with me? Exactly. And yes, you have a husband. Yes, that husband is telling you that you're beautiful. Yes, you have friends. You have family. And they like, girl, you all that. Mm -hmm. You just that in the third. Right. But it still starts to wear on you because it's like nobody else is noticing. I think people are taking the wanting attention too far. They miss making the Instagrammy. This is not about being an Instagram model. Exactly. She's just trying to be a, a and this is how women, and this irks me she, because uh, uh, men, and I say this all the time. If, if you are in a homosexual relationship, it may be a little easier because you are the same gender as the other person. So you should know. But if you are a men, a man, and you want to be with a woman, then you need to understand some basic fundamental things about women. Mm -hmm. And if you're a woman and you want to be with a man, you need to understand some basic fundamental things about men. And the fact that we sit there and banter over dumb shit, fundamental mm -hmm. things, or just how we are, mm -hmm. women like attention, period. Period. I don't but care if they like, anybody. I'm shy. Yeah. I don't like this, I don't like that. I don't care if it's from that person that they like. When you go to work and with your new pair of shoes on, you step. Because you want people to notice yes, your shoes. Exactly. And it doesn't make you conceited. It yeah. doesn't make you vain. It doesn't make you anything. It's just how we, just a little bit, of, oh, thanks, girl. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Dug these out the closet, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So when you buy it, you be like, mm, I'm a slay in these. Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. So it, it, you look and you exactly. turn in your foot. You like, so, yeah, and girl. And that's just a basic fundamental thing. Does she get attention from her husband? Absolutely. Does she love it? Absolutely. Does she want to be outside of her marriage and no. just walking around like this, like the community thought? Absolutely not. But you want to be noticed, and you may internalize those type of things. You also, may. she is a young. She's, she's young, a young yeah. mother, right? Mm -hmm. You. I'm not a mother. But I would imagine that, and I've heard this from my own friends and my own family, mm -hmm. that once you become a mother, right, everything's about your kid now. So people looking at you like mommy, you know, they don't look at you right. like, like you always hear stuff like you shouldn't be doing that. You a mom now, you know, you shouldn't be oh, doing this. People, people do say that. Like right. they'll see, I'm, I'm, but I'm using, I'm just using this as an example, like say, um, Amber Rose. She's a Amber, mother? Yes, she is. What? And she's pregnant now. What? So Amber Rose has this whole sexual prowess, right. persona, you know, who she is mm -hmm. and sexually liberated. And she mm -hmm. has this slut walk and all of that. Mm -hmm. And now oh, that she's walk. a, right. So now that she's a mother, people are like, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be wearing that see-through shirt. You shouldn't be doing this. And she's like, I'm still a woman. Mm -hmm. And and what people need also need to realize, your kids leave you. You know, they right. grow up right. and, th and then you have nothing else, but I'm just a mother. Right. And so Aisha Curry, she's like the little, you know, 
proper, a little shy, just like mm-hmm. all about stuff. Curry's little girlfriend. Mm-hmm. You know, she really didn't get a chance to experience her own life, identity, her own right? identity mm-hmm. outside of him. Mm-hmm. So of course she has those type of feelings where she's like, damn, I mean, you know, I want to be looked at as mm-hmm. this beautiful woman. I want to mm-hmm. be looked at as, you know, want somebody wanting me. Mm-hmm. I, I, I wouldn't mind that. It's and it's. I don't even think that it's seeking validation, you know, no, because she no. has the validation from her man. You know what I'm saying? People like you got a millionaire husband. You know, you got beautiful kids and this, that, and third. That means nothing. She still is her own individual person. Exactly. And exactly. I just and think, I just don't see what all the hoopla is about. And men, one of the um, well, you things know, I saw on social media mm-hmm. was um, that time when remember when Gina. Felt like Martin wasn't yeah. paying her any mind. She walked in with that plastic yeah. outfit on or whatever. And nobody paying like, her mind. They was like, any, no, everybody, like nobody said nothing. And uh, Aisha Curry, and she walks in like that, like, you know, even without being prompted. It's, it really isn't about that. And I think what annoys me more than anything is the fact that these young minded because they are, they're young minded. Mm-hmm. These young minded individuals think that there's something really wrong with. You know what she's saying. First of all, everyone's entitled to how they feel. And that's how she feels. That's number one. Number two, aside from the married part, like I love my husband, I could could say the same statement. I mean, my phone be... Hello. Right. It's like, I, did they do they cut it off at Fridays at six? Right. I must cut my phone off, and it comes back on. You know, Monday at eight because right. my phone does not ring, ring, tweet, beep, buzz, nothing all right. weekend ever. You know what I mean? So it, it's just a very normal thing, and people just yeah. You could sit back and say you can sit back and internalize that. Like, well, what the hell is wrong with me? Well, what right. the hell am I not doing? You know, you have enough. You have you yourself, I'm, you know, speaking for you, you have enough uh, self-awareness, self-confidence to know, like, nothing's wrong with me. It's right. Just, Today. It but some days I might right. feel like, oh, exactly. damn, ain't nobody calling me. Exactly. Like, this don't make no and sense. And I don't care now, how. it will work Monday through Friday. And I don't care how confident you are. Exactly. And how much attention you get. Exactly. Everyone has been at the same exact place that she's at, especially women. Every, wo- every woman has been at the place where they question something about themselves. Exactly. And so she's no different just because she's married or just because she has a faithful husband, you know, and I use faithful loosely because we don't know what these people are doing, you know, but it, 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 I, I agree with you. I don't know what the damn, what the problem was, you know, but it's also like people with this, you know, I blame everything on social media. So with social media, People look at her and her husband as like relationship goals, right? Oh, I want to have a relationship like that. Steph Curry could be beating her ass. You don't know. know. You don't know what the heck is going on. So people really went up in arms about it because they like, you got the perfect man. You got the perfect situation. How can you complain? You know, and it's like, you don't know what the heck is going on in her relationship. You don't know what's going on in her mind. Right. You know, and the girl said one thing and now it's like, one thing that was like, all right. One what, thing what, that was like everybody has said. Exactly. No matter or if felt you, if they didn't say it. It's exactly. no different than it's no different than if we take it Martin for example the the episode when Martin took his ring off and he went to the gym because he exactly. wanted to see if he still had it. Exactly. And everybody exactly. goes through that. Exactly. You can have the perfect situation, the perfect man. I don't look at nobody outside my. Okay, all but right. if a if somebody is looking at you in your mind, mm-hmm. you be like. Mm, okay, still got it. It's right. the same shit. It's the same thing. She just never experienced the uh, still got it. You know what I'm saying? Like people might not be right. looking at her not because she's not attractive. People might be looking at her like I don't want to look at her because I'm trying to be respectful of her husband. And how about she might not even notice the people who stare because she's so busy being a wife and a mother? Because I know exactly. that's me a lot of times. Right. You know, people are like, oh, well, I've been trying to holler. You and you're like, you what? What? Who? Who are you? Right. Like, <laughs> where'd you see me? You right. know what I mean? So it, yeah, it, it shut the hell up, people. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it should be all right. You know, one thing's for certain, and two things for sure. She opened the floodgates, and so. If she ain't think she had no attention coming, she got it now. 
she does. I don't know if it's the attention that she desires to have. Exactly. But she certainly is getting some attention. Yeah. So, right. yeah. <laughs> So what else is, is anything else going on? Well, there's always something going on, but before we get out of here, I wanted to talk a little bit about online dating. Um, because you know, I'm, I'm out here in these streets. I don't want to say it like that. Cause that sounded like I'm out here in these streets. Like I'm doing it. sounded like a juke juke. <laughs> <laughs> you know, cause I'm out here in these this streets doing juke my juke. thing. Right. <laughs> no, but I am out in these streets dating. I'm trying to date. I'm glad you know. it's working out for you. Is you it see, working out for me? It's the one, you see my phone. <laughs> I thought they cut. I think they cut it off Fridays at five, and they just be come back on uh, Mondays at eight. Mondays at eight. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, that's clearly what's going on. <laughs> clearly. Well, have you tried the online date? You know, I have. Now, yeah. I, we did an online did dating do episode. An online dating episode, and, and we you need was dating to, a murderer. This is kind of like an update to that. We need to. I, first of all, I wasn't dating well, a murderer. You, okay, you did I, it. I, I met him at a very public place. I didn't know he was a murderer, first of all. And I'll be very, very honest. The fact that he was a murderer did not bother me as much as he had all that damn hair. Yeah, he wasn't groomed well. Well, he wasn't groomed, period. Yeah. Well, he can't help that his damn hair is growing. Yes, but you can trim it and shave it. Like, you go to the barbershop, you knew you were meeting me for lunch. In enough time to, to go get the wax on the Q-tip and pull it out your ears, pull it out your nose, get your unibrow touched up, get it off your knuckles, off your hands. You was looking like the Wolverine was like, damn. He was hairy as hell. And his stomach done laughed over his thing. Like, his <laughs> his, his pants. Was, anyway, yeah, I don't want to cool. talk about him. I talked about him before. That was, like, episode two of our podcast. Yeah. So, go back and listen to, to that one. Right. But, but I, I, today, I wanted to talk about, because I've been online dating, and I've had some successes, meaning that I've had some decent dates, you know, mm -hmm. and then I've had some horrible dates, and we talked about that before. But today, I wanted to talk about some of, like, the problems of online dating or uh, what, I, what I've been experiencing about online, what I've been experiencing. Well, the problems I've been experiencing, and I'm telling you, I'm, when we do the you, the YouTube video, mm -hmm. I'm going to put these profiles. Is that against the law? Or something? Yeah. It, why? It's a public profile. No. Yes. I wouldn't put the profiles on there. Well, they need to be seeing what I'm seeing to see what the problem is, because this is crazy. I took screenshots of these profiles, <laughs> like the black man in a pool in a hot tub of all white people. And he was the only and one. And he's smiling all cheesy and looking like Boo Boo the Fool. You see and what I'm happened nice. with that woman. Who you went see. over to the sleepover, and exactly, was... with your dumb self. Anyway, I got that. Well, I got the man piece. who looked like Luther. Talking about he want friends with benefits. And he was and married. About, and he was married. He said he want friends with benefits, and he not just looking for a hookup. He will court you. And he's smart and he want to have good conversation before and after sex. Which I never understood because my thing about it is if I go on online dating and I say I'm married mm -hmm. and I'm looking to screw because that's what I'm looking for. Screwing just sounds so funny to me, but I ain't want to say f u c k -ing, but <laughs> <laughs> But if I go on an online dating profile looking for a hookup or like a sex thing... Well, I'm not courting you, and I don't want you to court me. This ain't a relationship thing. I know that this is what it is because you spelled it out. Hey, I'm married. I'm looking for a fuck buddy, and that's it. What you? What are you trying to? Why are you trying to wine and dine the fuck buddy? Um, I don't know. I didn't swipe right. I'm just saying. I, that was I, stupid. I got. I got nothing. And then we got the dudes with profile pictures of them and they got a woman's hand all in the back of their head rubbing them up and down and carrying on and then you got the guy who I did go on a date and I did like the guy when we were talking on the app he was nice funny you know cool you know talking about the parenting thing everything and I'm like and I kept saying what's wrong with this guy 
I can't imagine <laughs> like what's wrong with him. But in my mind, and it it may be wrong, but in my mind, I'm thinking something has to like not quite be right for you to be like this cool and on this app thing. You know, talk about you can't find a decent date and like the stuff he was talking about. And it was mm-hmm. funny, but. It was like, and I was looking forward to chatting with him every day because mm-hmm. he was funny, you know, and funny and serious. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. And then I actually went on the date and I was like, boop, there it is. You know what I mean? It's just like. What was it? He was like f- feminine. Ugh. Like not feminine like that movie with Megan Good and Kelly Rowland. It was on BET or something, and they the uh, Megan Good tried to get the ten first dates. Did you see that little yeah. movie? Mm-hmm. It wasn't not feminine like the guy that the girl ended up. Yeah, engaged. not feminine like that. But first of all, I can't do no kind of feminine in the man. Like I don't not long hair. Yeah, not you know. But he was like he pursed his lips. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot. First of all, you do it one time, that's a lot. But it was, like, more than once, so it was like, oh, my gosh! Like, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> and, like, was talking with his hands, but not talking with his hands like a dude, but talking with his hands like a chick. Like how we talk with our hands. Yeah, and I just, mm, I was like, oh, my gosh. But we had a good conversation or whatever, and I never seen her talk to him again. I know. And then another, oh, wait, I went on two dates. Because the other guy, I went to the Starbucks. And I oh. think I said, I talked about that. I went to the Starbucks. He didn't even have to pay for my coffee. I never heard from him again. He got some kind of, some kind of name like Toyota Tundra or, <laughs> no, I'm serious. No, I'm serious. His name was something different. Like, I was like, that's your real name? He was like, yeah. I was like, oh. <laughs> like when your mom looked at you, she was like, Toyota. Chevy Dakota. <laughs> it's something like close to the Toyota Tundra. It's more like Toyota Tundra. But what was his name? It don't Anywho. matter. Anywho. Well, yeah. what, what I would say about this, about online dating is, is this. What I don't like is that people who normally would not say anything to you, <gasps> they have so much bravado because it's online dating. Now you know you what know. I've been through. I don't like the fa- and here's the thing like you can you should be confident enough to talk to anyone or come at anyone but you know not just by their profile picture but just by the their conversation on the on the profile you know their description on the profile that if they saw you in person they would never say anything to you but then when they get on the online dating profiles it's like hey how you doing you know what i'm saying i i don't like that part of online dating i also think that online dating you face a lot more rejection than you normally would right so not i haven't necessarily faced rejection because like I don't really talk i i mean i i don't really talk first like i might swipe but then it's like, I swiped, so you should take it from here. You know what I'm saying? It's just like how I feel like if I seen a dude in person and I said, hi, take it away, Sam. I gave you the opening, the I'm interested, the I, the wink, wink, the <laughs> hey, hey, the come talk to me. And, and so, <laughs> you know, like, I feel like. You were really in that, huh? Yeah, but I, and I feel like take it away from here. You know, I, I gave you the opening, so I, I, so I don't really talk to people online like that. But I, I do feel like people face more rejection online than they normally would. Like you get a dude and they say hi to you, and then you like, hey, and then they like, well, what's up with you? And you like nothing. Like I don't want to talk to that person. That's a rejection for them. Or you may even be like, hey, to a dude and he might not respond the way that you want to. Now there's more rejection for you. Where if I, back to my point, if I seen you in public, I probably wouldn't even say nothing to you or you to me where I would feel like you would be rejected anyway. Cause you wouldn't even have the balls to say anything. It's just like anything online. It's online. So everybody has so much courage. Well, that was my initial problem with the whole online dating thing. I told you that the first time I tried it, I made a profile. It was like so late Mm -hmm. on a Thursday night. And by the time I woke up Friday uh, to get ready for work, 
I had like 400 messages. Right. And I was like 400 people and I was, a, it was a couple years ago before, and all my 40 plus years of living, 400 men, they never said hello to me. Right. And I was instantly turned off. Yeah. So I didn't care who you were. I didn't look through them or anything like that because I just thought, first of all, what are you doing? Staying up in the middle of the night waiting for people to make profiles? That's well, number one. they might not have been waiting for you to make a profile. Well, whatever. Profile, you you trying to be Johnny be, up well, in the middle of the night? You are so yeah, it's creepy. I it, look. I you mean, can't that's a, I think that that's a across the board though. That's an online thing. Is it? I didn't like. Yeah, that. because people work. They might be going to the gym afterward. They might be going to dinner, happy hour with their friends, and then it's like on a late night where they like, hey, scrolling because I'm bored. I ain't doing nothing. So now I'm scrolling. What's well, up sweet. with you? I'm just saying, whatever the they case. They might be up because they're chasing the money is. like Steve Harvey. Right. <laughs> just saying. Whatever the case, I was turned off completely because I had 400 emails. Mm -hmm. And 400 people have not even said hello to me. So you're absolutely right. I, I don't like the, the internet bravado. You know what I mean? Like, that, you won't say hi to me in a grocery store. Now you want to say hi. I don't like that. Um, then I went out with the murderer for lunch. And so I stopped that. And then I tried again. And it just... To me, it did not get any better. Now, I do take self-inventories. I think that they're important. All people should do them. And when I was listening to the podcast, I was like, wow, I sound really close. I wonder if I present myself that way, you know, and not that I'm trying to be all like, hey, hey, yeah. hey, I'm really not. But um, I feel like I am outside enough to have conversations at least with people. Yeah, but people don't do that anymore. And, and that's that, and, the reason and that's why, why it's online yeah. dating. Well, I'm not, because... I'm not, I'm done. I'm not trying it again ever. I'm, it's not for me. Well, it's not for everybody. I mean, when you really think about it. Just like Game it, of Thrones. Well, it's I'm saying it's not for everybody. You got to really be kind of like, I feel like online dating is just like if you was looking for a job, it takes a, it takes a lot of your time. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of effort to weed through the bullshit. Mm -hmm. You takes a lot of effort to weed through whether somebody is lying because you online, you could present yourself in any type of, you can present yourself in any type of way. So if you want to make yourself seem like the best thing, you the person perfect 10 damn 10 you can make yourself uh seem like that and then uh and then you get a person who falls for that and they like oh yeah this is the greatest guy and then it really isn't the greatest guy you know what i'm saying again like i said it takes a lot of your time you know i have a friend who recently started online dating right she got out of her relationship she recently started online dating she's like I was kicking it with this guy. We was having such the, the greatest conversation. We exchanged numbers. We was talking for like two days. Then I ain't hear from him no more ever again. And so me and another friend was telling her like, well, ghosting is real when it comes to online dating. And it's not even that the person is not interested in you. A lot of times it's just because you have so many options, right? If I'm... I'm talking to 17 girls or 17 guys online. I might have forgot the conversation that I was having with you. And then now I'm picking up another conversation. And I mean, that's just the reality. So you got to be, it's, it's basically like looking for, I mean, looking for a man. It's like looking for a damn job. Well, I'm not looking for a man. Well, I am looking for a job. You know what I mean. I don't I'm mean it like. I'm looking for new opportunities. However, I'm not, I, I don't have the energy to do that, especially online. Now, if someone says hello to me because, you know, I need a man that could say hello. Right. That you have to have a certain level of confidence. And, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with saying hello. There's no harm in saying hello. You don't have to like me. It's okay. And I don't have to like you, but you got to say hello. Or if I say hello, because I speak to people, especially if you're staring at me mm -hmm. or, you know, I don't care if it's in passing or whatever. I speak to people, especially in my new neighborhood. You know, you don't see a lot of black people there. I was like, hey, I seen black people in the market. I'm like, oh, hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? You have a good day. You know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I speak. It's, you know, and I'm just, for me, I think the traditional route is going to be the way because... Well, it is. Yeah, no. it's, it, it, it is. It's it's not for everybody. Now, I'll say with my experiences with online dating, I have had decent experiences. I, and it's probably because 
I don't half go when people ask me out. I'll be like, yeah, I ain't going. But that's just because I'm feeling like getting dressed, going there, thinking about what we're going to be talking about, seeing if you could carry on a conversation, wondering if you're going to pay. Well, I never wonder if somebody's going to pay the bill because your ass is going to pay or I'm going to leave. But just even that's the thought process. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have had good experiences in the fact that I've met you know, decent people. I've had decent dates because I can have a good time with anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, like it might not be a love connection, but you know, I've, I've had good times. And maybe if I went out with like every guy that asked me out, I might not have had good times. I'm very selective in, in who I'm like, ah, I ain't doing shit today. Let me just go ahead and go. And all those, let me just go ahead and go have been like good turnouts. Actually, a person that I'm dating right now, I met him online. So you're dating. I well the person. That means one person. Mm. I didn't say I was necessarily dating one person. That's you said. I this. said okay. <laughs> so okay. <laughs> I'm dating, mm -hmm. meaning that like I'm single. If somebody says, Do you want to go out and I'm interested in them? I'm gonna say yes. But a person that I'm dating currently, I met him online. Mm, nice. <laughs> I don't think that'll ever be my story. I'm just saying, but that's nice. Well, it's not going to be your story because you don't date online. Well, I've tried. Well, and it's the thing. I'm not saying it like I'm a, such a big advocate for dating online because I really feel like it's a bunch of damn weirdos online. Mm -hmm. It's a bunch of weirdos. It's a bunch of people with baggage. It's a bunch of people that lie. It's a bunch of people that stalkers. It's a bunch of people who are not them, their real selves. I feel like that about all social media, though. So I feel like if I meet somebody... I'm, you know, not necessarily if I meet them in a dating sense, but if I meet somebody or I'm conversing with somebody on Twitter or, you know, what people present on Instagram, because, you know, everybody on Instagram is rich, poor as hell, sleeping on a pissy mattress. But on Instagram, you look like the best thing since sliced bread. So people could present themselves any kind of way. Online dating is no different, you know, so it's a lot of things wrong with it. It ain't for everybody. You're the person that it's not for. And I'm not saying, like I said, like I'm a big advocate for it. Like when I'm bored, I go in there be like, uh, it just so happened. I was bored one night. I swipe right. I met somebody that was decent, you know, like, and he cool. Nice. I'm single. Mm. But you like, mm. Well, I mean, you're emphasizing. Okay. Well, that's because. Single and emphasizing. Yes. <laughs> Exactly. That's what it is. But I mean, like, I also think, though, that sometimes you have to be, and you were, you were open enough to actually do the online dating in the first place. You know what I'm Twice. saying? Twice. Maybe three times. You also are very, I mean, and I don't want to dwell this out, but you are also a little bit, and I... And I don't think this is a bad thing because I think when it comes down to online dating, you have to be mm -hmm. and you should be a little more hard than you would be on somebody that like if you met them hard on somebody that you met in the street. So like, but you'll be looking at the profile pictures like, or you'll say, they'll say one thing in a profile and you'll be like, uh-uh. It tells you right there. The dude said. It was a black guy. He was, his first words was avid kayaker. Get well, that's different. First of all, that's different than how well, that's that's the same. That's what no, you just because said. it'll be it'll be like a situation. You, it'll be like a situation like, oh, I work out, and you'd be like, uh, -uh I can't take him. He I don't work out. out. That's right. You, you you like the gym bunnies? Get out of here. Just because he said he work out, yeah. I work out. I ain't looking for no gym bunny. You're not looking for a gym bunny, but I'm just saying. you. And I'm not a gym bunny. If somebody bunny. says something about working out, I just don't think I'm the match for them. <laughs> because I work out with Hogan Dawes. You know what I mean? And I'm just saying, if that's something something important enough for you to mention, it must be important for you. Yeah. So you might want a slim goodie. You know what I mean? Right. I'm a little curvy. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's okay. It ain't for me. It's selective. You know, I could be wrong. I doubt it. But 
that's what you look if if it's enough for you to emphasize, you have to know who you are. Yeah. You know what I mean? No. I then he gonna be like, come on, baby, you wanna go to the gym? No. no. Yeah, <laughs> no, I feel that though. Because <laughs> I don't want the overly muscular guy in the right. profile that's gonna be like on a Saturday morning, like, come on, get up. Or the guy that's gonna be like, let's do burpees on the beach on vacation. Uh, no. No. Exactly. I'm sleeping And in. I'm just saying for as far as profiles, like I do have I'm very selective, okay. and I have like certain like rules. Like, if oh, your profile is full of pictures with you and white people, no. Mm-hmm. If you have a bathroom pic, a tank top pic, a no shirt pic, or a pic with your kids, no. No, I, I'm I'm not. You know, I'm. This is a it's a dating site. This is not for your family. I don't need to know you about your kids right now, what they look like, and all mm-hmm. that other kind of stuff. And uh, you know, what I mean, the whole tank top thing is like, get out of here. Like the whole no shirt thing, get out of here. The whole bathroom thing, can you go somewhere, please? Like, ask somebody to take a picture. Learn how to take a selfie in a restaurant, in your house, in the living room. But why in the bathroom? Why do you need this mirror? I, I don't. It's, it's sometimes it's better lighting in the bathroom. Let me tell you something. Get a lamp. I, I, no, I'm not. I'm not swiping right on that nonsense. Um. You know what I mean? There's just certain, it, all these misspell. you writing a paragraph and you misspelling all kinds of stuff. And I'm not talking about like things that, you know, I before E, except they've seen some people spell receiving. No, like woman, instead of saying women, mm-hmm. and it, like you got other, mis- and, like, I can't, no, you, you're not even literate. I can't. I can't. I just, I can't. So it's not very pe- many people that I can swipe right on, number one. <laughs> and mm-hmm. number two, when, like the guy, I was like, and I kept saying, like, man, there's got to be something wrong with this guy. He's like cool as hell. Like, man. Well, cool don't all, even if he did But I mean, person- cool, like, I would I would agree to meet yeah. you. I, you know what I mean? Like, this could be the guy. Like, yeah. personality-wise, he could be the guy. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know what I mean? But, and he wasn't a bad, he wasn't, like, drop-dead gorgeous, but he wasn't a bad-looking guy right. at all. Right. You know what I mean? He was dressed, you know, regular. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, that's cosmetic, you know. But I was that. <laughs> No, Mm-mm. no, that lip purse. I can't do that. Mm-mm. No, when women do it, I be wanting to smack them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I definitely can't. You yeah, know, I can't sit across the table from that. Are you kidding me? No. Well, all in all, you won't be doing online dating. No, I can't. I gave it up. I said, you know, I try. However, I am social. And I said that I'm going to be more open. I think I'm open. I speak. What? I didn't say anything. I think, uh, but your face, it's just like. You said, I think I'm open. I think I am open. I speak to everybody. I speak to people. Speaking to people and being open are two different things. Well, I'm open because I speak to people. Somebody speaks to me, I speak back or I speak to people initially. If if people invite me out, it hasn't happened very often lately. But if they do, you're open to go. I'm open. Mm-hmm. To going or to think about going or to right to think about going yeah. or you know let's have a conversation. I'm also very considerate and that when you ask me out, I'm not saying like right off the bat let's go to Del Frisco's. Yeah, you know what I mean. No, right. we could go here. Oh, you know what? I know a good farmers market. I'm looking for something specific. Would you mind walking around with me? That don't cost you any money. Nothing. You know and that's mean? another thing I feel like about the online dating. You can do things that don't. Cost money and that get to know money. people. Yeah, seriously. Because that's the most important thing when you meet somebody on online dating. If you meet somebody in person, it's important. But when you meet somebody in person, you have that initial connection, mm-hmm. right? That initial mm-hmm. like, oh, I want you to ask me for my number and I want to mm-hmm. give it to you and right. I want to talk to you right. afterwards. When you online date with someone, you don't have that. And so the most important thing is getting to know somebody. So you could do a lot of things that don't cost you a lot of money so that you could get to know somebody right. to even know if you want to have another date that exactly. will cost you money. Or, right. Exactly. And so a lot of times men complain, i.e. the Aisha Curry situation, they complain about stuff, uh, about a situation that's non-existent. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't say like, oh, to date me, we have to go here, here, here. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that. It's like you want to get to know somebody. Right. You know, there's a whole lot of ways to get to know somebody. I volunteer at a lot of places. In fact, I know someone who volunteered to feed the homeless. That's where he met his wife. Mm. You know, they were volunteering to 
feed the what? homeless on the same day. And um, I love that's to hear he stories her. like that. We were volunteering together. Oh, I was catching a cab and he jumped in the other side. Oh, I was standing at the line in the airport and he asked me if he could use my pen. Oh, we were sitting next to each other on the train. Oh, I was walking down the street at Essence. None of that shit ever happens to me. Well, I met somebody at the airport and he complimented my dress. And I was, you know, I was, I love my dresses. I was like, thank you. Like, hey, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And I was, you know, thank you. And he was a nice guy. That never man. happens to me. Well, it And I've been in many once. airports. We many... dated for two years, too. Okay. That never happens. <laughs> but then, too, I've been on good online dates and you haven't. So, I mean, hey, shit happens. But I said, again, I met them. Said he said hello first. Mm -hmm. I said hello, and he was like, "That dress is really nice. Like you look really nice in that dress. Thank you." And then the old chippies he was with just started trying to j jump in and bark, and I was just looking at them crazy. But I'm just saying it happened. So to me, if a person is interested, all you have to do is say hello. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you don't know what to say after that, compliment a woman. You know what I mean? Compliment a woman. A woman. It's it's not hard. Mm -mm. You know, I like your hair. I like your dress. You look nice today. Smile. It can't be that bad, whatever, even though that gets on my nerves sometimes. But say something. You know what I mean? And stop thinking that everybody is going to be um, rude or standoffish or not going to speak. And then we have to be mindful that there are life things. Because sometimes, you know, I always say I can't stand when men, when men stare. And they don't speak. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But sometimes they're still human. They could be married in a relationship, going through something, knowing that they don't have anything to offer, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. So when they, I don't get upset about that stuff anymore. Right. Cause I mean, I, pr I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. You know, don't waste my time. Don't waste your time. You know, what, whatever the situation is, cause you don't know the situation. Right. It's all right. And, and finally I'll say about online dating, get off of, um, the internet, you know, go out, experience life. Then you probably won't have to do online dating. That's just how I feel about but it. I People feel don't like I go places. Not you. I'm saying this in, in general. I know. I'm saying this I'm in saying general. I feel like I go places. So yeah, I should have had 400 people saying hi to me, but I didn't until I was the one that online. Well, you ain't going to have 400 people saying hi to you no more because you're not going to be online no more. I'm just saying, I'm, but I'll be out and about. Yes, but I'm talking to the people, not to you. I'm saying... I know, but I'm not trying to discourage the people. I already be out and about and the shit ain't working. That's what I'm saying. I'm not trying to discourage anybody either. If you want to do... Oh, and you know, to wrap it all up and to bring it full circle, online dating is not for everybody. Not. And it's your decision. Exactly. But also, I don't care even if you've had success stories. Get out and experience life and get off of the internet. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Because life happens outside of the internet. And even though it's the new way of doing everything, because they even have, you know, where you, because like how I met my friends that I have in my neighborhood mm -hmm. now, you know, shit, we have has met on online, not, you know, like we up. met at a meetup mm -hmm. and then it was like, oh, okay, you know, cool. Right. But I went online to find the meetup to right. meet the people, you know? So, I mean, shit is, the internet is what it's for, but get out and experience life outside of the internet. And if online dating is for you and you have success stories, I want to hear about them. If, if, if who I'm dating and I'm using that word like dating, if who I'm dating turns into a success story of some kind, we will be hearing about it every week, all the time. Because I'm going to say it. Absolutely. I'm probably not. You're right. Right. I was about to say, now <laughs> you, you are talking to me. As private right. as I am, I probably will not right. be saying it. You probably won't be seeing his ass on social media. Right. Like, no, I, you don't post on social media. I don't media do that. Like that. And, yeah, I, and I that's never nothing. And I, and like, if he becomes, if he becomes something serious, I did say this. I can't wait. No, I said, I can't wait to get me a man so I could post him on social media so people could see him. And then I start getting attention and I take him down. 
Yeah, because I, I, don't, I don't really want y'all to know my business, mm -hmm. but I'm going to put it out there just so mm -hmm. you can be like, yeah, this is what's going on. But then I'm taking them down because I don't like people in my business. Mm -hmm. Even though I don't put my business out there, I don't like people in my business. So I'm only going to keep it up for a little bit and then I'm going to take it down. Mm. So you probably won't be hearing about me about it every week. No, because you're not going to talk about it every week. Right. That's just not how you do. No. I can have a man be, right now. You never know. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. They be like, oh, you got a boyfriend? Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm in a whole ass relationship. Right. I have been for three years. Right. Yeah, that's just not my thing. But listen, if online dating is for you, I say do it. Flow it on. So if you're brave enough to say hello, say hello. When you out, just start saying hello. If you don't want to do the online dating thing, and please, 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 nothing irks me more than people talk about, I do online dating because I'm too busy. Well, bitch, if you're not too busy to be online, because that's work. Because that's more that's, work than, 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 saying, than saying hello saying at hello. the Walmart. Because you didn't work in the Walmart. It's the only store open, and that's where you got to go pick up a morsel or a new pack of underwear. And you know what I mean? That, that is more work than saying hello. Sure. Oh, I just don't meet people. That's because you're not talking to anybody. Right. You know what I mean? But if you have all that time to be online, you could be out somewhere and say hello to people. That irks me. And with that, we're going to go ahead and get on out of here for this week. We hope that you enjoyed this week's episode. Remember that an all new episode drops each and every Monday. Remember to subscribe to the podcast, share the podcast, like the podcast, comment on the podcast, anywhere where you can listen to your free podcast. We are on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Spotify, and YouTube. Remember to follow us on social media. We are found on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at We Did That Shit. Follow me on my personal Twitter. It's my my thirteen. That's M Y M Y one three. And I'm at the B Amina. That's B I B B I A M I N A. I'll say it again. Remember to share the podcast anywhere where you share. All your information, send the text, tell somebody about the show, like, subscribe, comment. We need the comments, people. We appreciate you. We'll be here next week. Remember, be great this week. Say hello to somebody. Do that shit. I love you, Maya. Love you too.